is that they have certain fear, strange fear. Anytime, anytime Satan speak or Satan brings a vision or a dream, in it, it has tabiatatu. One, Satan brings confusion. Satan brings fear. And Satan brings deception. Anytime Satan speaks, he will either deceive you, confuse you, or instill fear on you. When Satan spoke to Eve, what did he bring? It was not fear. It was deception. Whenever Satan brings a dream or a vision, it will either have one of those three inferences or two of them or three of them or either one of them. Fear, deception, or confusion. And right now as I speak, anybody who is watching or is around this place that drew a certain dream or vision <laughs> you added up in three of those or one of those. I release the blood of Christ on you and I command that fear to add. Hallelujah. Why does he, why does Satan do that? It's because if Satan is able to instill fear, confusion or deception, those three things open up to projects of the evil. Most people who have been introduced to Satanism, it is started either in one of those. Fear in a dream. Fear. We have seen young men, uh, some of these young, young junior study school. Somebody says, Bishop was walking in a street. Suddenly I found a woman and that woman threatened me and said, and, and, and the boy or girl is put into a, 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 a kind of fear. And then there was the one I had another time from Kayore. That boy, that girl was invited by other girls to visit a mother in, an, in the neighborhood of the school. Not knowing that that mother is practicing some satanic manipulation. They took some tea. From that moment, all those girls had some strange fear that compelled them or ordered them to steal money and take to that woman every day. It was like a, a, a demonic command that those girls who visited that woman should give her 100 shillings every day so they used to steal. The parents did not know. It's only one girl from our church who was able to disclose when they came to my office and we destroyed that attack. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Like now, Satanist, you can meet somebody on the street and he threatens you. Have you ever known some of the robbers, some of the robbers in the street, majority of them, there was a time I was able to handle some renowned thieves around Bahati and other areas. And I interviewed some of them who became our members. And one of them told me that his mother had taken him down to Tanzania in Tanga to obtain witchcraft powers which he applied when stealing. He said, Bishop, I didn't have to use violence. I'll just look at a person and somehow would mani manipulate your mind. Na kwa jia po ujielewi age kwa bia tuwele kwa account. Igia kwa bank. Tuwa pesa nilete. Kwa bia enda. 
So, anybody who wants to instill fear on you, strange people, watch out. Don't allow it. Immediately when you know there's a strange person who is bringing some fear, straight away, use the blood of Jesus against that person. It stops immediately. Amen. Because when a quaker walker, if it persists, it penetrates into other areas of the brain in a way that to drain it, it will be difficult. So stop it at the entry point. It's like a disease. A disease can be stopped at the initial stages. But when it absorbs, when it penetrates in body system, removing it is a lot of work. The same with fear. If you stop the fear at the entry point, you have won. Use the blood of Christ. Now the Bible says in, Gen in Le Leverage chapter 12 verse 11, and they overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and they didn't love themselves. They loved Jesus to the end. Three weapons. Blood of Jesus. Second one, word of testimony. The third one, loving Jesus to the end. Do you know those three are very powerful? Do you know one of the things that you cause Satan to fear you is because you love Jesus to the end. I love righteousness to the end. There's no space in my life where I miss the sacrificial love of my God. Hallelujah. 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 And therefore, you, you know, we heard of that. And uh, one thing that we also cause some of, for you to be open to satanic messages is unbroken covenant with witchcraft. If your family had a foundation of witchcraft and you are involved somewhere, somebody involved you in that. Let me, there was a time I was invited by a couple they were new to me to pray for their daughter in the neighborhood of the church. That daughter would somehow be in a coma for about almost three hours away. Almost dead. I said, Bishop, our daughter is likely to die. When I went to pray for that daughter, the Lord spoke to me and said, don't lay hands on this daughter. Ask the parents the cause. I asked the parents, what did you do with this daughter when he was a baby? They said, Bishop, we removed parts, some items from her body, nails, the hair, and we took it to a witch. A witch. And I told the parents, repent and be saved. When the parent repented, their daughter was healed. You see, you see, the daughter was being attacked because there was unbroken covenant with witchcraft. And that's why if you notice in your family there were those covenants, take time, pray, and fast, apply the blood of Jesus, repent the sins of your parents, repent the sins of whatever, and break the covenants. And let me do something. And you, you'll be able to stop the propagation of those curses. Some of you, you realize you have problems that used to be with your grandparents just because you are propagating an evil. You are propagating a curse. If you look behind and know this is how my grandfather used to suffer. This is how my grandmother used to suffer. This is how my parents were. And you realize those sufferings, those setbacks are following generation after generation. Don't allow it to continue. Stop it. Break those covenants and you can produce from yourself now 
going forward you can produce a new generation that has no relationship with those those foundations jabez did that he broke a curse from his mother and he said lord expand my territories your hand be upon me so that i may i may co- i may not cause pain i obtained the curse of pain from my mother but i stop it from now henceforth i will never propagate that pain he stopped the curse hallelujah hallelujah a curse has three things it has cast itself the demon in charge of that curse and the sin or satanic action which is the seed of the curse do you get that sakao mashitika hiyo when just sometimes we teach these things and you people are not careful about them and you keep on suffering because you didn't hear the teaching i say any curse has three ingredients one the curse itself lana yenyewe the curse itself number two, the the sin or evil practice which is the seed of that curse and that, that thing the demon in charge of that curse and sometimes a curse can attract satanic messages you realize in a certain family people have common dreams what the dreams that used to to occur eh, or the vision of funny funny hallucinations that used to happen around your parents are happening to the children you realize there's a family that has funny dreams all of people are dreamers but they dream so many dreams they have so many dreams that they end up being confused or possessed because there's a curse or a system that attracts those things so may god help us now hallelujah bwana asifiwe there are times you can get a satanic voice or a dream or a vision when satan is trying to gain entry into your life you have never had any evil dream but it comes because now satan want to see whether he can introduce something so you get a dream that is so evil is the first time you have received such a dream satan trying to get an entry point if you receive such evil message one night stop it do you know why eve had problem because satan spoke the first time and eve allowed satan to speak second time satan can speak first time but stop him right there hallelujah hallelujah now that's very important there are times a good christian will lured into strange voices because of being because of falling down the going uh, you know you fall from the spiritual standard De- being degraded you these days you don't pray these days you think evil these days you never practice the things of god you are so low spiritually look at me anybody who is saved and you are above there and you are prayerful there is a station at the bottom here where satan waits for you if you fall down you reach a level where satan has been waiting for you you are running short of god's glory you are running short of prayer you are running short of meditation of god's word you are running short of spiritual warfare these days you don't fight spiritually you, you are just loose you flow with any evil unajikuta umeenda chini umepata shetani mahali wanakugoja by the way let me say something anybody who was whichever evil you used to have you know we are delivered from diverse problems there's a person who got saved but your main evil was immorality there's a person who got saved but your main strong 
hold was lies. Another one got saved, but your main issue was witchcraft. Another one got saved, born again, but your main sin was masturbation. Your main evil was pornography. Your main evil is addiction to drugs. So those evils sometimes they wait for yet another chance. That's what Christ says. Uh, if you're not careful, they'll come back seven times more stronger. So don't get low spiritually. Keep the standard higher. And Satan can never climb up to those levels. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, 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 now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You can get, you can be open to satanic uh, voices if you begin being open to wildly way of reasoning. There are people whose mind lose godliness and you become so secular that you reason, you conform to the wild way of reasoning like now, instead of, instead of, uh, you, you realize that your mind is, 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 is not really spiritual. It's not covered. Anyway, God bless us so much. Let's see several ways that God can speak to us. We have handled the issue of dreams. We've handled the issue of visions. A vision is occasional. It is something that comes to you when you are somehow awake. It's like the way God would appear. Like now Ezekiel. If you read the book of Ezekiel, God did not speak to Ezekiel so much in dreams but in vision. The same thing happens to, to Daniel. Daniel have we God used vision and halfway he used dreams. But for Ezekiel, it's so much vision. For instance, if you go to Ezekiel chapter 37, you realize he says something unique there. He says, Yes, Ezekiel that seven, he says, Uh huh. The heart of the Lord came upon me and brought me out. Can you imagine? This one was somewhere. Eh? The head of God was upon him. And now from that moment, hallelujah, Bible says, and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of dry bones. Is this a dream or a vision? Is it a dream or a vision? is a vision. The man is awake but suddenly the spirit of God is upon him. Let's look at Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. If you go to Revelation chapter 1 verse 10, what does it say? I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Lord's day means Saturday. The day Jesus rose from the, the first day of the week. And I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet. Hello, praise God. If you go to verse 13, then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. Is this a vision or a dream? It's a vision. Most of the vision happened this way. You are in the spirit of God. And the spirit of God can take you to... He, he just lifts you. I was, sharing, I was Let me give an example. I was sharing with a family in this church. Some years ago, I was driving our church van through from Modurua. That is, I took the Jogo Road. And I was driving, I saw one of the husbands, a husband to one of our sisters, ran towards the vehicle. 
and people were beating. The man was bleeding. I, to me, it was real. The man came, akaja na kibia, amepigwa, anamaga damu. Akafugua mlangu wa church van. Akasema, wacha ni ingia igari ya kanisa diyo na amani. To me, it was real. So I thought, instead of coming down through to Jogo Road, let me drive Pale Enterprise, ni mpereke wapi? Mata Hospital. To me, it was real. Nikachukua simu, ni pigie, dugu, dugu yangu, eh, please, ni fuate, naenda. When I was trying to call, I realized it was a vision. Na imagine I'm driving. Things just turn. Because, no, my servant, that's a vision. I'm awake, driving, Jogo Road, and a vision in the care. Last time I shared with you of a vision I saw in the office. Mustana Likuja, maskini sana nalia. I asked God, who do you have for this young, young girl? Very poor. And Kuagaria Jew, instead of corner ceiling, I saw a big, magnificent, expensive house. And God said, look at that house. That's how that girl will be in the future. Ataka ngambo. And I'm, I'm awake. Visions mutu wona kia awake. But wale tu meokoka is only when you are in the spirit of God. Kuna vision watu wona ni kama sijui ni damu ya uko. Ya kuona vituko vituko. Ni kawana nyoka. Ni kawana apana. Most of the visions, biblical visions, you realize somebody says, and I was in the spirit. We've just led Ezekiel 37. And I was in the spirit. And the head of the Lord was upon me and took me. If you, the same thing with this brother, John, he says, it, it was on the last day. I was in the spirit. I heard a loud voice behind me. I turned around to see it. And I saw somebody. If you go all through, like now in Ezekiel 47, Ezekiel 47, what the Bible says, we are almost through because time is gone. Ezekiel 47, the Bible says something here. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple and there was water flowing. Hello, praise God. Now, if you check carefully, in a vision in the Bible, the people who saw it claimed the source and the responsibility of the vision was with the Lord. I was in the spirit and the spirit took me. The head of the Lord was upon me and he took me. I was praying and suddenly I saw. Amen. Now, there are times God can speak. There's a time if you are a prophet, somebody is a prophet, and, and God, you are so much flowing with God's calling. There are times God can speak to you regularly in vision. God can do that to a mature prophet. Whereby God can decide to speak to in a vision. Just you are seated in the kitchen, you are cooking, and God just brings Bishop around and tells you, now can you pray for Bishop? You know, there are those mature intercessors. God, God can just appear to you in your dining table and he reveals to you, he brings to you the president. Pray for the president. And you pray. To a mature intercessor, to a mature apostle and a prophet, sometimes God can let speak to you in a, in a vision. Because God wants to, you to pray and pray and pray. Hello, praise God. There's a time we were in an on it prayer meeting. Eh? 3 a.m. I was reading prayer in, this car, in the church. I saw a vision. I saw a vision. Na nikaona maternity ward. Labor, where nursery, where children are kept as they are nurtured to become better in the whatever, in the labor world. I saw several. And God told me, tell the church to pray. Because Satan has planned to kill so many babies. 
in those places. It's just a vision. You know why? Because if you are mature intercessors, God intercessors, God can bring to you so many things happen in the world because he knows you not mess up. You can handle many visions. Hello, praise God. And he knows you are able to keep the secrets of the kingdom. You know, God can relate to you in the level of your maturity. May the Lord help us now. Kuna wakati watu wanaharibika akili. If somebody has distorted mind and your mind is not working well, you may have funny hallucinations. Those are not visions. Ni akili imepiduka piduka hivi na hata mapicha mapicha. Sasa wewe unapeleka kwa madhare. Akili katulizwe. Asa, unaona mtakwambia, "Eh, ndiona nyabra." Ni akili imepidu. Ndio my is complicated. Inaweza toa maono maono mengi sana. Kiki 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 kiki. Naona 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 naona. Naona naona. Na kuna watu ambao mapepo ikiwaingia ninataka kukuharibu hasa ukiombewa na pasta au mtu ambao ni divina they put that on you unaanza kuona 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 vituko hii au naambiwa uombe sara ya bwana mara 20 ukimalizia unakuta hujiski leo kuna mmoja alikuwa hapa aliniambia alikuwa ameambwa na msijui somebody to, to repeat lost prayer 14 times alipofanya hapa You know, you is using the lost prayer like is witchcraft, eh? Kumaliza alipiga duru. Nikamwambia stop it. So you need to watch out those funny funny manifestation ambazo zinatokea kwa sababu uliobewa na divine au kaabiwa huo kifanya kitu na wao. The visions of God involves the spirit of God. I was in the spirit on the day of the Lord. And the Lord took me. It's not hallucination. It's not an issue of confused might. It's an issue of stable might. Sober might. Under the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. There are times God can speak to you through audible voice. This one is not very regular. But sometimes God can speak to you like a person speaks to you with a loud voice aloud your ears. Or you can just hear a loud voice in a house. That one is occasional. Hiyo ni Mungu aitumia hiyo sana. Lakini kuna wakati Mungu atakachagua kuogereshe kabisa na sauti unaosikia. Uh, in most cases he doesn't use that so much but he can use that in a mature prophet a mature apostle or intercessor if god want to use it regularly he can only use it to a mature prophet who can is like moses moses was so mature god could just speak to him in a loud voice if you check the life of moses If you check Numbers chapter yeah, chapter 12 let's go there Numbers chapter 12 God introduced his method of communication with Moses in a unique way he says something look at this scripture Numbers 12 verse 3 now the man Moses was very meek more than all men who are on the face of the earth do you know why god could speak to moses so often one is 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 because he chose to speak to moses that way but another thing is because moses was meek than all men in the world meekness means you are so simple before god that god can just speak to you the way he wants the bible says when god Descended on that day. 
because there was an issue of Miriam alone rising against Moses, God introduced his method of communication to Moses, uh, with Moses. He said in verse 6, then he said, hear, hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I the Lord make myself known to him in a vision. That's in Numbers chapter 12 verse 6. Now, verse 7, no, I the Lord make my in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. God is saying he used to speak to prophets in visions and dreams. But what about Moses? Not so with my servant Moses, for he is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face, even plainly and not in dark sayings and he sees the form of the Lord this is interesting in New King James Version it says while God would speak to Moses Moses God the Bible says and Moses sees the form of, of the Lord hallelujah to other prophets, I speak in visions and dreams. But to Moses, is face to face, word to word. Amen. God used to speak that way to Jeremiah. If you check the book of Jeremiah and the book of Amos and the book of Isaiah, God will speak word to word. What do we call that? Inspiration. What is inspiration? Is when God speaks to you, either in the spirit or audible voice, and you write directly what God is saying without making any mistake, without deducting or adding to the message. Inspiration, speaking as God speaks. There are times God would speak, I say, God will say, rise up. Write what I'm saying. Audible voice. Hello, praise God. Especially when recording a message. God would just, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, when God would involve men in writing a direct message, God would, would do that by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Let's finish now today's message. God can speak to you in instead of speaking to you directly, God can speak to you using a situation. That's a situation. What I used to, to, to tell people, uh, what I used to call providential openings when teaching new members, a situation. God did not speak a word, but he just opens a way or he does something to prove what he wants. An opening, a direction. Hello, praise God. Bwana Sifiwe, you are praying for a job. Instead of God speaking to you about it, he makes an opening. Hallelujah. Bwana Sifiwe. Amen. You are praying for a certain person. Instead of God speaking to you about it, God just makes an opening. He does something. That is also a voice. Another one is God, if you are not so much sensitive, can speak to you through restraining you. Sometimes God closes this door and closes this other door to restrain you. Have you ever noticed sometimes God knows there is danger somewhere? Instead of telling you there is danger, he restrains you. God knows that bus is likely to have an accident somewhere. And he wants to save your life. Instead of telling you there will be an accident, he just restrains you. Unaingia makaga na kutoa. Na kamu ziki makaga na kutusi. Ontoka mama una akiri. Una kasirika di uzigie. Restraining. There are times God will just restrain you. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. In that last train, 
God prevents you from going or God leaves you with only one option so that you end up in his will. He did not speak, but he restrained you. Hello, praise God. Buana suasana. Sometimes God can restrain your son from joining a certain school, a certain girls, a certain school, just because God knows there's something wrong there. But he does not speak to you, but he just restrains to leave one way open. And it's very important for you to notice when God is forcing you into a certain direction by restraining you. Because if you push God so much, he can allow you to go through that restraint, through what we call permissive will, and you'll not blame God later. There are people you want to get married, but God is restraining you from that girl or that brother. Just because he knows that brother has a secret evil. That brother has a problem. And because you're an innocent girl and God has preserved you for a specific redemption purpose, if you push it so much, it can happen to a brother. God knows that lady has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. She's just there eh? to, to, to claim or to whatever, to get you in that trap. God, you allow you. We got permissive view. So when you suffer, when you are the pain, God, you'll not be responsible because you never heeded to the less train. Are, are we together? Are we together, friends? There are times God will speak in your heart. Do you know why God speaks from inside? And that one is is common if you are clean. If you are clean. Si roho mtakatifu anaingia kadani. Si tuliagua atakuwa kinena. Kuna sauti ya dani, mahali roho anakaa. Because God said, when the spirit of truth comes upon you, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak about himself, but whatever he hears from heaven, he will speak. Where does he speak? He can only speak where he is. Where is he inside you? We call that an inner still voice. Somebody who is clean and you are always conscious about the Holy Spirit, you are likely to have that voice inside you. It's something that happens inside you. You can't, it, I can't explain how, but you just sense the Spirit is speaking from inside and that voice gets to your mind at a great anointing. And you are able to know what the Spirit of God is saying from inside. I'm, I'm saying the Spirit of God stays inside. And the Bible says he will speak. He can only speak well from where he is. Where is his station? Inside you. Much of the revelation can occur from inside where the Spirit of God is. So you are able to have that voice if you always preserve that goodness. Don't spoil the voice. Are you understanding? There are people who speak chaotic. You know, you are so chaotic. You are so careless in your speech. You can, you, you, your senses are open to any evil. So it's very hard for the Holy Ghost to speak. But if you cover yourself well, and you are always conscious that the Spirit of God, of God is in you. And you are careful about his presence. There's a likelihood the Holy Ghost, you have a chance to speak to you from inside. Amen. You can just be walking and you sense from inside. There's something Holy Ghost is saying. And that one is very important. He can give you, it can be a voice. It can be a signal. It can be a clear voice. That one is very important. God can speak to you also using other gifts. Do you know this is so common and God uses other people to speak to you, especially those who exist in the real fellowship of the church. The real fellowship of the Holy Ghost. Look at me. The church is the body of Christ. 
Christ is the head. Eh? What is the head? It's the central nervous system. If today you hurt your right heart, it cannot be able to dress itself. Is it true? It requires your left heart. It requires your leg to take that heart to the hospital. It will require your mouth to communicate with the doctor. It, is, it, is it true? You see that coordination is ministry of the organs under the head, Jesus Christ ministering to each other. Not all people can be used to speak to you. It's only people who have, so, who have surrendered themselves so much in a way that Jesus have put them together as organs in the body of Christ. Not all people in the church are in the body of Christ. Not all people. There are people who are in the church, if they speak, they hurt you. If they look at you, they speak about you. No, they have not yet attained the system of the body. Because you can't have your right heart hurt your left leg. You can't have your mouth hurt your finger. The head cannot coordinate organs that way. Because our head is just Christ. Na yesu haezi kualibika. Sinikweli. Ukiona dugu anasengenya dugu mwenzake. Ujue haja fanyika vizuri mwiri wa kristo. Kwa mana hakuna kichwa haezi ya bia mukono uumize nini mugu. Kwa hivyo wale wana kuhudumia in the body of Christ. Ni wale wamekubali kujisalimisha kwa Yesu. Watumiwe kwa jia ya utukufu na faida na Yesu. Na hiyo jia hutumika sana in the church. Bwana wabariki. Are you understanding? God using other brethren who exist as organs in the body of Christ under the head who is Jesus Christ. And that one helps so much. In a meeting, when a sister is sick, in wedding arrangements, God just coordinates this and this and this and makes your wedding successful. One person in the church is hurt, is in the hospital, God commands that one, that one, that one. We pu he put us together until you get healed. Body of Christ function. And that one, Jesus would like to use that more than anything else. God can speak to you through daily study of the word of God, Bible, as food. Not as just study. When you read the Bible as the food to your heart. And you are reading it as the word of God for your heart. God will speak to you. God can use Bible prophetically. God can use Bible, change the written word into the living word. You realize you are reading John chapter 14 verse 6. I am the way, the truth and life. And that word changes to be the living word or the prophetic word for you that day. And God uses Bible more often than any other voice. God can use, now I'm finishing, the gifts of the Holy Spirit to speak to you. One, the gift of revelation. There are three. The first gift of revelation is word of knowledge. When God speaks about something that we do not know what to do with. There's a sickness. We don't know what to do with it. There's a stubborn issue in a family that is a certain problem. We don't know what to, what to do with it. But God speaks about it and brings a solution. Word of knowledge. There is another gift we call word of wisdom. Of the Holy Spirit. When God brings his purpose concerning a person, a church, a family, or a business. He comes to say, this is what I have. The plan I have for Mama Vicky ni he. Wakati mungu anaeta kusuri lako la kuishi. Plan yako ya maisha. Anasema na hivi divyo. Nimepagia hii family. Inaitua word of wisdom. God can also speak through what we call the gift of discernment. 
when God comes around and is able to cause us to see through until we are able to identify a certain demon or a certain satanic spirit and we cast it out. Or we are able to identify the cause, the spirit behind a situation. We are able to discern a false prophet and destroy his works. We are also able to discern how the spirit of God is moving and we are able to follow him. Discernment. Amen. God can speak to you in the church through gifts of inspiration. There are three. One is prophecy. Prophecy is speaking direct from the mouth of God. Direct. And you speak direct from the mouth of God to the church, to yourself, to an individual, what God is saying. And you speak in a language that somebody can understand. And any prophecy should start by strengthening, edifying, exhorting, or comforting. God can speak to you through tongues of message. You know when you speak in tongues, there are tongues of prayer, but there are tongues of message, where you can speak in tongues, and God gives you, you the same person, the gift of interpreting the tongues of message in a way that people can understand and they are healed. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. I say to you, God wants to restore his voice. That's the third part of that message. We may not proceed from here because time is far much gone. Today we had so many people that came for healing. That's why we are late. But I thank God you persevered to hear the voice of God. May God bless you. From today, set yourself apart. Let God know you are ready to hear him. Live like a person who God can speak to. Whenever you come to such a service, just tell God, speak to me. Don't just attend a such a service. Amen. When you go to your knees to pray, just be open to God. When you read your Bible, tell God, speak to me through your word. When people are singing, tell God, speak to me through, your, through their singing. And know the word of God has characteristic. The voice of God has characteristics of God. It is peaceful. It gives strength. It gives life. It is holy. And the person being used is afraid of God. Not a thug. Not an evil man. It's somebody who hates sin. God cannot use evil men to communicate holy messages. God bless you. God bless you. The only time God uses bad people is when he want a vessel of dishonor. Like Falau was a vessel of dishonor. A vessel of dishonor. An evil person being used to do evil because he's evil to punish some people. That is another area. But generally God is God who is honorable and his messages are powerful. And any message of God comes with power to perform. If you say God reveals to me there's somebody with a kidney failure. As you speak it, it comes with healing. God does not just speak to inform people that somebody is sick. God is not there just to give us information of a sick person. He speaks about it because he wants to heal. May the Lord bless you. Father, cover us in your blood. Keep this church, O oh God. At such a time, help us to be open and to be so willing to hear from you for you want to restore your voice in the church. Baba, now I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. Whoever is sick, be healed now. I said, be healed. Jesus. There are people here who have fear of death. There's something 
unasikia tu una this there is a strange fear of death i rebuke that because it's from the devil in jesus name there's somebody here you feel like your family is not safe please i release the cover of the blood of jesus on your family in jesus name i release the cover of the blood of jesus on your business in jesus name you know come me really there is you have an issue that you don't know what to do it is either financial problem a domestic problem marriage problem the lord is saying to you he has taken over he has taken over can you hear this when things get worse god god leads to show you new things that you have never known when things get beyond your mind don't say you have come to a net it is a moment god want to take over and show you new things and god is saying now you have not come to a net financially you have come to a point where god want to take over and show you new ways and new businesses follow god from now follow god from now follow god from now follow god from now when jesus visited bethany lazarus place and they said lazarus is dead lazarus lazarus is dead and jesus this man has been dead for four days there's no way christ said i am the resurrection i'm not only a healer i am the resurrection and christ said i'm not going i'm now coming in a different manner you expected me to heal and now the brother is dead i'm not postponing the visit but i'm now coming as the resurrection jesus can introduce to you another higher power to handle a higher problem that is so straight to you bwana anambia mumu fuate sasa akuonyeshe jambo jipya linalopita akili yako pokeni ulizi wa damu ya yesu pokeni utajiri mpya in Jesus name. Amen.